It is inevitable that you will buy something that you will eventually regret. Sometimes these purchases are made with the best intentions, but you forget about it for years and years and find it in a drawer and are like, when did I buy this? To help you make fewer silly purchases, here are a couple that I'm sure you will regret. Let's go. Nowadays, it's very common to have a lot of subscriptions to all of these different streaming services. HBO, Hulu, you know, Amazon, Apple Plus, Netflix, Peacock, right? And all of these other different ones that are out there. But in the past, it made so much sense just to have one, which was Netflix. It was the biggest, it was the best, it was really the only one you had for a long time and everything was on it. Nowadays, everything's just so specialized. It's only their content from their streaming service. If you want Disney shows, it's just on Disney, right? So, you know, if you want to watch something that isn't Disney or isn't something else, sorry, bud, you got to pay an extra 10, 15, even $30 a month to watch this content. And that really adds up. Something to consider is splitting the cost over a friend group. So let's say Tommy buys Netflix and Sally buys Hulu and Jimmy buys Disney Plus, right? So you're spreading the cost out over the friend group, saving you all money instead of everybody buying everything all for themselves. And also it forces you to hang out with your friends. So let's say you all are interested in watching this new show on Disney Plus. So then you all go to, I forgot his name. Let's say it was Tommy. Let's say you go, Tommy bought Disney Plus. You go over to Tommy's house. Now you're all enjoying the show together. You're bonding, you're hanging out and it's a good time and it saves you money. And besides, do you honestly think you're getting your money's worth out of, let's say you have three streaming platforms. Let's say you hang out with friends, your family, you. You go on a trip, let's say you work late, or maybe you were feeling well, so you go to bed early. All of these other things start to add up and cut into the time that you could hypothetically be using these streaming services. So it really can't justify the costs of all of them because you're not spending enough time using them. So is it really worth that one show that you binge in two days to pay the $30 for? I don't know. Now, another great one is extended warranty. And I'm sure this has been a topic that's been debated forever. And if you want, put your two cents in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think. But let's say you buy something really expensive and, you know, really fancy. And the salesman is very good at what he does. He's like, hey, you just bought this thing that's very expensive and fancy. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. You might as well get the extended warranty for X, Y, and Z every single month or year, right? And you're like, oh. He has a point, I just dropped like two grand on this. You know, if it breaks, I'm kind of screwed. I mean, it'd be silly not to consider this, but do you actually need it? Now in the past, I've stated that products these days don't really have the build quality of things from the past. Many companies have shifted away from building something strong and something that will last for 20, 30 years and to just building something that's, you know, good enough. Uh, and it will last for a little while, so eventually it will break and then they have a repeat customer. Here's the thing, most products these days do come with some form of warranty, typically like a time frame, your first year, or a set amount of miles, let's say your first 50,000 miles. It really depends on the product if you really want to extend that warranty to like five or 10 years. And also the other thing is, if you do your research and buy a brand that's tried, trusted and true, then you should be good. And when you are doing your research, look at the reviews that are three stars and four stars, because those tend to be the most truthful compared to one and five. Another one is trendy kitchen gadgets. So bear paws for shredding your pulled pork, the avocado slicer, the one and all tool to make enjoying your favorite snack a breeze. And who can forget the grape and tomato slicer, a true classic of culinary cuisine. If you flip through infomercials, you're gonna see dozens of products like this. You know, one listed for 1095, or another one for two small installments of 1899. The issue with these products is that they're so, so specialized, right? A grape cutter. What am I gonna use a grape cutter for? A grapes? That tiny. You're just gonna pop it in your mouth, eat it whole. It makes no sense. Another issue with these products is there's usually an easier way to deal with the ingredient in question. Bear paws for your pulled pork? Use your hands or use some forks. An avocado slicer? Just use a knife like everybody else does. Grape and tomato slicer? Just press them between two boards and slice them if it's that hard. 
chances are you have a tool in your kitchen already that can do this problem and solve this, you know, what this gadget does for absolutely free. Another one to consider is brand name medicine. According to Health Direct, quote, generic medicines have the same active ingredients as brand name medicines and work in the same way, but many look different and contain different non-active ingredients. Generic alternatives are often cheaper than brand name medicines. This is because the company that produces the medicine did not need to invest the money in developing and marketing it, end quote. So if you're looking for some medicine, try the generic brand. You may save a lot of money. Also, generic brands usually come into existence once the original patent expires, typically after 20 years or so. So if you're looking for a medicine and it's been 20 years since it's been out, chances are there's a generic medicine for you to buy. And finally, luxury bedding. It really makes no sense because in reality, you should be focusing on the bed, not the sheets. Putting lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig, right? Good sheets on a bad mattress is still going to equal bad sleep. So first of all, get a good bed. And if you're still in the market for sheets, try some mid-priced ones because they're still going to combine quality with durability. So go online, look for some reviews and see which ones people like the best. But don't forget, the three and the four star reviews are usually the most truthful. Buying things we don't need can be an Olympic sport in some people's homes. So the next time you're out trying to purchase something, ask yourself these questions. Can I afford it? Do I have the space for it? Do I actually see myself using it? And if any of them you answer no, don't buy it. It'll save you time, it'll save you money, and it'll also save you the hassle of having to throw it out years from now. And with that, I'm Evan, and thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.